Welcome back to my channel, glad you could join me. Today I want to talk about the gear that I use for photographing panoramas. Now photographing panoramas is what led me to leave my film camera in 2003 and buy a small digital camera because photographing panoramas with film or with slides was so hard. It took me so long to process these in Photoshop. Once it became digital, it was so easy to merge, even way back in 2003. But every time I do a video tutorial on panoramic photography, I get asked questions about, should I buy an index rotator? Should I buy a panoramic gimbal? What gear do I need to photographing panoramas. So this video is designed to answer all the questions that I get about the gear that I use. All this gear that I talk about, you will find in the description of the video. Now, do you need all of this gear? The only need gear that you really need if you're just shooting panoramas with no foreground detail and you're willing to accept a faster shutter speed and a higher ISO is your camera. That's all you need. And that's all I started with. But I found when I wanted to improve my game, improve the quality of my videos so I can shoot with a slower shutter speed, so I can reduce my ISO, so I can get better composition, then you're going to need some of this gear. Now I stated in my last video that when I started shooting panoramas, all I was doing was shooting panoramas with no, no foreground detail. But I started getting into trouble when I started including foreground detail and I was getting what is called parallax error. That is that it looks like there's ghosting in the front, that you've got your object appearing multiple times in the foreground because your foreground and your background is matched up. And that's because most of the time your camera is mounted right in the center of your tripod. And if you don't understand parallax error, I'll put a link, watch this video, and then you will understand why you need some of this gear to either minimize or totally eliminate parallax error in your panoramic photography. Number one, tripod. You need a tripod that is fairly stable. You don't want like a little El Cheapy $30 or $40 tripod that the legs are very rickety. You want something nice and firm. Now, both of the tripods that I use are quite firm. I have a Vanguard tripod, which is my lighter tripod, and then I have my Manfrotto 055 XP Pro, which weighs in at around two and a half kilos. The only time that I really use this heavy tripod now for everyday photography is if I'm going to the beach and I'm going to sink this tripod in the sand or the mud, or if I'm shooting astrophotography and I'm going to do very long exposures, then I will use that tripod. But for everyday photography, even panoramas, I will just use my Vanguard tripod, which is very adequate for that. A lot of people, when they buy a tripod, it comes with a bald head. But for my panoramas, this is one thing that I rarely use. I rarely use a bald head. Why? Because it's very hard to get your bald head stable. It just flops around in all directions. And that is the last thing you do. Because if you're putting your camera on a tripod, you want to make sure that the whole tripod is level, left to right, front to back. If it's not, then you're going to get your images either going starting from high left going to low right or low left going to high right. And if your bald head is not level, then you're going to end up with an arc or an arc going either way. And this creates a lot of problems when you're going to start merging these images into a panorama. You're going to end up cropping a lot. This is one of the reasons I don't use a bald head, but you can use a bald head and I will show you the steps that you need. So once you have a tripod, we take the bald head off it and you're going to need a spirit level to make sure that your tripod is level 360. And this is a spirit level that I recommend. It's called a T. This is what it's called. Now you can see I've actually drilled two big holes in there. Why? Because without the bald head in there, even if you're shooting with a bald head, you have to take the bald head off to get your tripod level. And I put this on here. And then all you do is adjust your legs of the tripod until the spirit bubble is in the center, both to the one that's going left to right and to the one that's going front to back. When you know that that's right, then if you're using the bald head, you can screw the bald head quickly back onto it like that. Put the spirit level back up here and do the same here. Get everything level. Because if everything's level, then you can rotate 
your bald head like so and everything is going to be level. But like I said, normally I don't use a bald head. This can be very time consuming, getting your three tripod legs exactly level. And I found that this was such a pain. So what I did a few years ago is I bought a leveling base. Now this one here, you can see they have very big knobs, but I found it was very time consuming. And sometimes I just didn't use it because it was too time consuming. And this is the type of leveling base you can get. They're not that expensive, only about 50 odd dollars, but they're very finicky. And I would not recommend people buying one today. I would recommend an adjustable leveling base. So this is the one that I prefer. It's called the Sunway Photo leveling base. It spins around. Once you unlock it, it spins around up to 15 degrees. So the tripod doesn't have to be that level. All I do is screw it on here. This is where the holes come in again. I put it on very easily, get it level. Once it's level, I have four ridges here that I just tighten up nicely. That's it. My tripod is now level. My base is level. I can screw the bald head if I want. Normally, like I said, I don't put it. I use either a panoramic rotator, screw it on here, or this is the cheaper way to go. It's just an Arca Swiss clamp that has a rotator on there. Now this is what I have, the Leo Photo Arca Swiss clamp. It actually came with my bald head here. If you don't want to spend to buying a panoramic indexing rotator, this is a panoramic rotator as well. All you do is just screw it on here. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is that to make all this gear work, you need an L bracket for your camera. Most landscape photographers use an L bracket. And if you already use an L bracket, you know why they're so good. But the reason an L bracket is so handy is because most panoramas we shoot in portrait orientation. So you want to be able to put your camera in portrait orientation. I just put it on like that. And now if I just unlock it like that, I can just spin that around because this is not an indexing rotator. It's free moving. So you just move it a bit, make sure it's just thumb tight and you just move it around one third, one third, one third until you get all your photos taken. The reason I prefer an indexing rotator is that these have little notches in here. You can see that. Now, if you're buying one of these, it doesn't matter the brand you buy, you make sure that it has an Arca Swiss clamp on top, because if it doesn't, you're going to need to buy an Arca Swiss clamp to screw on top of your rotator. The way they work is just you screw them on there and they have degree markings on them. Mine starts at 15 degrees, but these ones start at five degrees. This one came with my panoramic gimbal, so it's great. But what it means is that I am stuck at a maximum focal length of 35 mils. If I shoot zoomed in any more than 35 mils, I don't get enough overlap. But that is not a big problem for me because most of the time I'm shooting very wide, anywhere from 11 to about 20 mils. That's normally. So this is the beauty of having an indexing rotator because there is no second guessing. Imagine the camera's on here and all I do is it's now it's moving at a 15 degree angle and you can see it's going 15, 15, 15, 15, 15. This is great because all I do is if I'm shooting a stormscape is I take one row and then I reset it to the start. And as a storm gets close to me, I can just, again, just shoot a single row of images. This is why an indexing rotator is so much better than just a panoramic rotator. I put the L bracket on my camera because I want to show you something. So we put the camera on here, presuming everything's nice and level. Here we go. We're just taking photos like this. But this is where parallax error comes in because our camera is above the tripod and most lenses their nodal point is out here somewhere. So what we want is we want the nodal point to be in the center of our tripod. So when we're rotating the camera like this, we're rotating it around the nodal point. So things in the background and things in the foreground of our panorama will all line up and we won't get what is called parallax error. And how do we fix this? Well, I'll take it off the tripod here. I have a 200 millimeter Arca Swiss rail with an Arca Swiss clamp on the back here. And this is made by Newer. My reasoning for buying this one is it's only $20. Once we put this on here, this now 
would be the nodal point. So when the camera spins around, I'm not going to have any parallax error at all. I'm going to have perfect panorama. And if I was doing a multi-row panorama, then I wouldn't be tilting here, even if I had the bald head, because I've explained in past videos how to shoot panoramas, how to use all this gear, because today's video is not about how to shoot panoramas. It's about the gear that I'm using. And take a look at this video here. It's an introduction on the different ways to shoot panoramas, handheld, with a bald head, or with a rotator, or with a indexing gimbal as well. If I'm shooting like this, and I want to shoot two rows, then I loosen up the screw here on my L bracket and tilt the camera up or tilt the camera down. So I might start tilting the camera down a little bit, do one row, and then tilt it up a little bit and do a second row. This gives me a much higher field of view. And this is the reason why we shoot in portrait orientation instead of landscape, because we shoot a panorama to get as much megapixels in our image. If we're shooting landscape, three images on with an ultra wide angle lens like this Takina 11 to 20 is going to cover a huge area, but it would only equate to around a 50 megapixel panorama. If I shot the same image in portrait orientation, I'm looking at around 120 to 150 megapixels. So I've got more detail in there. That's the reason why you should shoot your panoramas in portrait orientation. This is the most complex one to use. I only use this for my astrophotography. I will very rarely use it for stormscapes or normal landscapes unless I'm in the city and I've got to shoot at least three rows. Now you might be wondering why spend a lot of money on a panoramic gimbal when you can buy a little gimbal like this for around 50 odd dollars. Well the answer is very simple and I'll point it out here. Now imagine the camera is here. Can you see where it is? So this is where it's going to be spinning around from. It's not in the center. So when you're spinning it around it's not going to be in the center of your image. This is why I don't use this type of gimbal. This is the unit that I have. It's just titled 720 degree panoramic head. So for $250 this is what I got. I got the index rotator plus the whole panoramic shebang. So this is what the setup looks like. It just rotates like that. And if I turn the camera like that, this is how you normally set up to make sure that the center of the camera is in the center of the tripod. So once that's done, you know that that rail is right. But then you've got to have this rail here as well. And this is just like a secondary rail as well. So this one here, you have to know, say, so okay, if I'm using the newer rail, it's 85 mil. So I have to have 85 mils the same here. And I'm not going to have any parallax error. It's a lot of hassle to set this up. It takes me a good five, maybe sometimes 10 minutes to set up. But when I'm shooting astrophotography, I have all the time in the world. And I can shoot one, two, three, even four rows. And I'm going to get all the rows lined up because when I start, I can be shooting downwards like this. Then I can bring it level, then I can take it up, then I can take it even up. Now the reason why I bought this is because at the start of the Milky Way season, April, May, and at the start of June, depending on when the full moon is, the Milky Way is very high up in the sky. So the arc is very high. Around September, it's much closer to the horizon. I can get away with just shooting one row. But at the start of the Milky Way season, I might need to shoot three rows of images to get the whole panorama with quite a bit of foreground. So this is why I bought this system. So this is the gear that I use. Now, if you have any questions about the gear, leave it in the comment box below. All the gear I talked about here today will be listed in the description. Thank you for watching. If you found value in this video, give me a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do. It really helps me out. Stay safe, enjoy panoramic photography, and I'll see you next time.